Father God, worshiping and adoring you, Father God, knowing, Lord God, that nothing is impossible with you, Lord God. And Father God, even tonight we come in agreement, Father God, with your word, for your word is truth, Father God. And we just speak even now, Lord God, for breakthrough, Lord God, for freedom, Lord God, to be released, Lord God. Arise and shine, and our enemies will be scattered, Father. And Father God, we just tonight, Lord God. Lift your name on high, Lord God. For there's no one that can compare to you, Father God. You are the only way maker, Lord God. And Father, we just come corporately in agreement, Lord God, for all these things that everyone's going through, Lord God. We speak breakthrough. We speak freedom, Father, even tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that all is well, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, and we will keep our eyes on you and nothing else, no matter what's happening, Lord God, because you deserve the honor, Lord. You deserve the glory. You deserve the praise, Father God, and we come to praise you tonight, Lord God. You're worthy, Father. You're so good, Father God, and we just thank you tonight, Lord God, for what you're doing, Lord God. I thank you that you are moving, Lord God, even on behalf of our loved ones, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, even tonight, Lord God, that we will see it with our natural eyes, Father God, their salvation, their deliverance, their freedom, Lord God, even now, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for being so good, Lord God. Now, Father, that we don't give up, Father God, that we keep going, Lord God, knowing that you'll see us through, Lord God. Knowing, Father God, that you are the way maker, Lord. We just thank you tonight, Lord God. We just glorify your name, Lord, because you're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being so good, Father. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father, and we praise you tonight. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I just want to uh, grab your attention to the announcements. I'll just say. Welcome to the Citadel. So glad to have you here with us. And we would also like to thank those of you who have joined us online. We would like to welcome our first time guests. We're so happy you're here. Please fill out a connect card. Raise your hand if you need one, and one of our greeters will be happy to hand you one. Or scan our QR code on the screen to fill it out from your smartphone. Don't forget to download this church center app and choose the Citadel as your home church to keep up to date with upcoming events, giving, and being a part of small groups. Join us for a pre-service prayer an hour before every service in our sanctuary. We encourage everyone to join our early morning prayer from 5.30 to 6 a.m. We have a time of soaking. And from 6 to 6.30 a.m., we pray on behalf of our city, church, and family. To participate, join the early morning prayer small group on the Church Center app to get the Zoom link. Let's agree together in prayer. Are you interested in serving by volunteering? We need your help with media, ushering, greeting, and kids ministry. Sign up sheet is in the back or see Veronica Acosta. Sundays, 5 to 6.30 p.m., we have our women's, men's, and kids' ministries. Women's ministry, Hearts on Fire with Ana Chavez. Men's ministry, Kingdom Men with Robert Acosta Sr. Kids' ministry, Cadet Edition with Catalina Campos. Come grow with us. Are you a woman between the ages of 16 to 35? If so, we have the perfect group for you. Girl time. It's a time to hang out, fellowship, and study the women of the Bible once a month. See Emily DiCocheo for more details. Can you play an instrument? Would you like to try out for our worship team? If so, see Nimsi Acosta for more information. Welcome to our second annual prophetic conference. The exile is over. We will be meeting Friday morning at 10 a.m., Friday night at 7 p.m., and Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. Be blessed by the powerful words being released by our prophetic speakers. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you bless your God in God God's house again tonight. Amen. Amen. So good to see you all again. And this time I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to sow into the conference. I have a scripture I wanted to read. 
with you guys tonight. We found the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. It says, there is one who scatters, yet increase war. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. So I'm going to talk to you guys tonight about what holding us back, what leading us into poverty is withholding. Yeah. And it's withholding. <laughs> Amen. We read the first verse. It says, those who get scatters their seed, they increase. But what lead to poverty when we withhold? Right. Yeah. The best example I can give you in the story, okay, let me see that in the book of um, 1 King chapter 17. When God sent Elijah the prophet into a widow, and he asked her, it was during famine, famine, and he is a prophet, okay? God provided for him, but God sent him to a widow that doesn't have much, doesn't have anything, and he walked up to her and he told her, hey, I want you to bake me a cake. I want you to prepare something for me to eat. Right. And my mind was thinking, oh my gosh, why can't you go to someone that has money? Okay? <laughs> why can't you go to somebody that has money? But you go to a widow? What are you doing? And you know what the woman said? What are you doing? I already have a plan. This, I'm in the middle of famine. I mean, everybody knows. We're in the middle of famine, and all I have left is one meal. Can't you see? I'm gathering sticks. Now listen to what she withhold. And she had a plan for what she had withhold. And here's the Lord asking for it. But she had a plan for what she withholds. She said, no, I already have a plan that I'm gathering all these sticks because I'm going to prepare a meal for me and my son, and we're gonna eat it and die. Wow. I love it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna eat it and die. That's a great plan, man. My goodness, he is so worried coming to help you to deliver you. Yeah. But you already think we hold, and you have a plan for what you have. But here is God wanted to come and bless you and prosper you. Yes, God could have sent the prophet to a wealthy woman, <laughs> to someone that had the money. But God knew you need that. You need that deliverance. You need that blessing. You don't need to withhold what God asked you. Right. Oh, look what she said. I'm gathering sticks. How many of us, many we are withholding because we gather stuff. Yeah. We fill up our garage you know, with sticks because that's our plan. And then it got built up. Guess what? We have a garage sale. <laughs> because we have so much stuff. But God wanted us to give it to him as his word says that those who scatter, those who give, increases. But those who withhold leads to poverty. I tell you what, so I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to give. I found out that the guest, he gave a thousand dollars. The speaker gave a thousand dollars. He challenged me. I'm going to give a thousand dollars too. <laughs> I'm going to give a thousand dollars too. And so I'm going to give you guys the opportunity. Because I'm speaking it by faith. When the Lord gave me this word, and I was saying, you know, because when we were planning this conference, Veronica knows we were planning to charge $75 per person. But then if John and I we were thinking, no, we're just gonna, I shared with you guys, we just came from a same conference in Mali that we spoke in. It was about $300 per person. <laughs> but we wanted, to make this uh, available for you guys. But when I read the scripture, I said, God, I'm gonna give the opportunity 
because I want to rob you guys, you know, by not giving us, not giving you guys the opportunity to sow. Yeah. Because I know what God, God sent this word. Yeah. God sent the, the prophetic uh, uh, conference here. Why? To bless you guys. Yeah. Amen. Look what I am so glad. Finally, when the woman said, no, I'm not going to bake you a cake because I already have a plan for it. I'm going to eat it and die. <laughs> but here is God wanted you give it to me. That's why I said, my God, why he demanded her to get you? See, she's a widow. Don't have much. But he said, thus save the Lord. Thus save the Lord. The reason why I'm here because God wants to bless you, prosper you. That is not God's plan for you to eat your last day and die. And I am so glad that this woman obeyed. Amen. So I'm going to give you guys the opportunity. And then to give us so in and name your seeds. Say, Lord, I'm doing this for my sins. Whatever concern in your heart. Okay. And pray and ask to God, I am sowing this seed. Yeah. I'm trusting you that some of us, we have family members. Yeah. Maybe we have sickness. Maybe we have a relationship. And listen to what... Um, what uh, the prophet said. What, I'm not saying that you have to do what I'm doing or do what the speaker said. What's in your house? Amen? And that's what the woman did. She obeyed according to us. Maybe some of you need to do what we did, okay? Because I know not, the reason why I'm freely asking you guys to do that, not for my own gain, but I know God will prosper you guys yeah. and bless yeah. you guys yeah. by giving you guys the yeah. opportunity to sow into his yeah. work. Amen? Yeah. God could have to the conference someone else, but he brought the conference here to you and I. Why? Because he knows that you and I need a blessing. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because he could, just like what I said, God could have sent the prophet to somewhere else, but he sent the prophet to the widow because he knew that the widow need the blessing. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So I wanted you guys to sow in and ask God, God, I am obeying your word. Just like what he said tonight. Like what I said, those who scatter increases more. But those uh, who withhold lead to poverty. Amen? And I know this for facts. We can never out give God. And I tell you what, that's why I speak this word to some of us. We with hope and we have a plan for our cake and it destroying us. Yeah. But God wants to set our family free. God wanted to use what we have and give it to the Lord and watch God multiply and release. Give you an answer for what you have been crying out for. Amen? Praise God. So if you want to, you can... Um, Give online, go on our website, or text the amount of that uh, number, or also you can download the app. Make sure you choose uh, Citadel. There's only one church, one Citadel church here in Tucson. And of, if you want to use, uh, if you want to give cash or check, Rob is gonna. You can raise your hand. He's gonna pass you the envelope, so you can be blessed. Amen. You can raise your hand, and I'm gonna pray a blessing. Over you guys. I'm looking at many people tonight, like the widow. God is going to bless and prosper you, your family, your business, bring your children, I mean, save your children, because some sow a seed for your children. Yeah. Amen? I mean, what, the, what they ask for the prayer for the member at their church, I tell you what. If that was one of my family, I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna sow a seed. And guess what happened? The, read the, the rest of the story. Later on, that son died. But guess what? She brought, and the woman went back to the word, to the prophet. And I believe God is still smelling the sweet fragrance, sweet fragrance of that cake that the woman obeyed and paid the cake for the prophet. And guess what? The prophet came back, pray over that son, and that son came back to life. Oh, Amen? Yeah. So that's why I pray, God, that God, you will obey his word. Yeah. Now, I'm not asking you for me. 
God already take care of me. God already take care of everything. But I am asking for you. Amen? So if you want to raise up your hand or your phone, if you if you are ready to give, I'm going to pray for you. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for your people. I thank you, Father, for their obedience. Lord, I pray that tonight you are losing your people's heart, oh God, to obey your word as you have given me this word this morning. That those who scatter increase more, but those who withhold lead to poverty. Father, we don't want to withhold. Lord, all our little plan is leading us to death. Just like this woman, she had a plan that she's going to eat it and die. But I pray that tonight you are breaking those plans, oh God, because we are coming out. We are coming out from poverty, oh God, and walking into increase. Walking into blessing. I pray, oh God, that you destroy the mindset of fear or from our mind or from our emotion or from our heart. Help us, oh God, to obey you and trust you, oh God, knowing that we are doing it for you. Not We are not doing it for the speaker. We are doing it for you, oh God. Yeah. And I thank you, Jesus, and I praise you, God. Lord, I pray again, this is what your people have in their house. As you have asked, as the prophet asks a woman and he asks what's in your house lord this is what your people have in their house that's what they have in their wallet and they are presenting it to you lord i pray oh god they look you look down individually for what they are giving you tonight and i pray oh god that you prosper them prosper their business prosper their ministry prosper their family oh god i pray oh god for your protection upon them i pray oh god that you continue to guide them give them great health yeah. so they can create wealth and be a blessing for their family and I thank you, Jesus. And I praise you, God. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, God. This moment, real quickly, as I'm going to have Robert, his multitask. Because I wanted to share with you guys um, some of the ministry that we do because we wanted to make it available to you guys, let you guys know what we're doing uh, every Sunday here. So Robert is leading the man's Bible. Say, come on up here, uh, Robert. So I wanted him, and he's doing everything. <laughs> So I wanted him to share a little bit what they do on the women's, I mean, in the men's, I'm sorry, Anna did that women's <laughs> Bible study. But Robert had up the men's Bible study. So I want to share a little bit about it real quickly. Amen. Well, what it is, is, you know, teach men how to be bold like they're supposed to. Come on. Yeah. It's teaching men how to be men yeah. and yeah. serve God at yeah. the same time. Yeah. It's yeah. not about weakness. It's not about being timid, man. It's about speaking forth. When you yeah. come boldly yeah. to the throne, you come boldly to receive. You don't come boldly and say, okay, this is what I want. You walk away empty handed. You're going to walk away with something in your hand. Come on. Yeah. So, you know, that's the main thing is that, you know, it's, it's to transform the lenses that we have that we've been taught all these years yeah. to transform and say, okay, like, like my wife preached early this uh, morning, it's like, who to say to say I am? You know what I mean? It's not what people say I am. It's not my past that defines me. It's that God defines me. That's it. You know what I mean? And you know, I could care less about what anybody says. Mm -hmm. Because it's what it's the end word that God has. Yes. You know, He knew my He knew my beginning, yeah. He knows my now, and He knows my end. Uh -huh. So and that's the main thing that we teach the men is that you know, yes. you gotta come bold, you gotta be bold. Yeah. You know, this world ain't got nothing for you, man. We're supposed yeah. to be headed to earth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so yeah. that's that's a little part of what we do. Like you know, we teach it, you know, and teach people how to how we influence others. Yes. You know, we look at what's happening yeah. before us uh -huh. and we see all this yeah. all this junk. Right. But look beyond it, man. That's what is it. God doing? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not what the junk's happening, not what's going on around yeah. us. Yeah. Because then we get in fear, then we get in, yeah. in doubt, then we get in depression. Yeah. And that's not what it's about. No. It's about what God is doing. We're supposed to change the atmosphere when we walk in. Amen. It's supposed to change. It's supposed to be what we want it to be, what God has set before us. Amen. You know, the path is straight. Yeah. You know, it's just our vision. And it's just our stumbling that causes us to go to the left and right because we're waiting. You know, so that's, that's my thing. Amen. <laughs> I'm a firm believer how important it is to raise up men's ministry. A lot of churches we go to this morning, uh -huh. they're men. 
So that's why I want to encourage you guys. My God, we need great, strong men yes. of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Set the example. Yeah. A lot of, especially nowadays, why family fall apart? Because there is no father. Yeah. Man, rise up. Set the example, amen? So I just wanted to let you guys know what we have available. We wanted to make sure that we uncover every uh, every uh, area of family, ministry, so, so that way you guys know that we can help you, help your family, amen? amen. This moment, I'm going to ask Catalina if she can come up and share a little bit quickly about what her ministry is. She is our children pastor. And she has been such a blessing helping out with our children. We can do, hallelujah, praise God. We can do the ministry without her. Look, we're here tonight enjoying the service because she's leading up. The children is over there. She's heading that up. She didn't help, okay? I mean, if you, uh, if you wanted to interest in helping out in the children ministry, please help her out. Amen? So you share real quickly. Praise God. Amen. So the word of the Lord says that our children are like arrows in the yes. hands of warriors. Yes. And here at the Citadel, we are with precision, prophetic precision. We are aiming for their destiny. Amen. We are training them up as if they're going to live as prophetic adults in this world. Amen. So bring your children. We, we, don't, we don't play around. We're here to train our children in the ways of love and in the ways of the Lord. The world shows them so much. We need to show them so much. Amen. So join us. Amen. And, um, um, when Prophetess Muliana, she asked me if I could come talk about the children, I said, yes, but is it okay if I talk a little bit about the conference as well? <laughs> Go for it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the conference really fast. Are you guys ready? Yes. <laughs> the it's called the exile is over. Yes. Right? In order for your exile to be over, there's some things that are gonna have to die. Right. In order to go to the promised land, yeah. you're gonna yeah. have to yeah. leave some things behind. Right. If you don't, the people that didn't um, leave the, their mindsets behind, they die in the wilderness. Yeah. The yeah. people that didn't leave, they're complaining. No their 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 hearts. Um, yeah. that, they're, they left, they didn't leave with faith. They left, they left with fear. Yeah. They stayed in the wilderness, and that's where they died. Right. It was the people that had the vision of the Lord, yeah. not the giants, yeah. Yeah. not the land that they had to conquer. They had the vision of the Lord in their hearts. They made it to the promised land. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you have some people that you have to leave behind. Yeah. They yeah. left oh, some people yeah. behind. Yeah. The people that don't have the same vision that you have. Sorry, I'm gonna have to leave you behind because my promised land is waiting. I'm not willing to stay in the wilderness and die. Amen. So I don't know if it's bad habits that you guys are gonna have to let die in the wilderness, but let them die. Because if you don't, you will die in that wilderness. Rise up, put your eyes on the promised land. It's worth it. You're gonna be so glad when you enter your promised land that you let those things go. They're not gonna be that big of a deal anymore. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you so yeah, much, yeah, Catalina. Yeah. Praise God. Real quickly, before John come up, I was packing because we're heading to next church tomorrow, and, and I didn't know. John just grabbed, he thought that I packed it to bring it in. I said, might as well. So, and I have, uh, there was a bag that I have, so I said, just bring it in. We have five different books, and John had written, I'm going to share real quickly. Can you imagine how good God is? My husband did not finish high school. He did not know how to spell either, okay? <laughs> Both of us, we don't know how to spell. We share this everywhere anyway. But why? Because to see how good God is. Amen? Remember I think I shared the other day, we were in Maui, I think a couple months ago. Oh no, we were in, uh, speaking in Oahu, and then um, we are on a plane flight to Maui to go speak over there, and I felt a tap on my shoulder, and I looked up, it was him, and he said, how to spell appreciation? And I started spelling A-P-P-R and this stuff. I said, look it up in the dictionary. So for both of us, we cannot spell, okay? <laughs> so anyway, but look what the Lord has done. I think his first book, we sold over 
10,000, yeah. 10,000 books. And it's amazing. And he had written five books. He's, I think his latest book is out there. It came out this year, right? It's called Leading with a Generosity. Love that book. Because if you, and the scripture said, a uh, generous soul shall prosper. If you want to be prosperous, you're going to be generous. Okay? So many of us, we want to be prosperous, but we forgot the first part. We forgot to be generous. I tell you what, I enjoy being prospering. In uh, not only finances, but every area. It's just amazing. But anyway, so that book he read, I mean, he wrote it, and we have to have somebody that, that have a master from Princeton University. <laughs> To edit his books. You know the amazing thing is, you can write books and you don't know how to spell, but have someone that knows how to spell edit it for you, okay? <laughs> but that's how good. Same person that edited Bill Johnson's book in uh, Reddit, edit our books. But it just shows you how good God is. When you trust God, when you sow love to God, when you not withhold, okay, but to scatter, you will be increased. God will prosper you. So I just want to show you guys, we have some books back there. And I grabbed this one. It's called Awaking the Prophetic. Because I know I shared with some of you, there so many other books back there. But uh, I think I grabbed one before because I was not packing to bring here. I was packing to, to take to the uh, next church we were heading tomorrow. But I wanted to share with you guys this book, Awaking the Prophetic. No, because this is a prophetic conference. Knowing the gift that is already in you. Why? The prophetic or the prophecy is already in you and I. Why? Because what, what he said, in the last days you will pour out his spirit and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. In other words, God wanted to awaken the gift that is already in you. You said, in other words, when you see a problem, when you face a crisis situation, I said last night, I was dealing with cancer. I know I have to prophesy right away into it. I am not... John 22, 28, it says, make a decision and decree a thing. Amen? In other words, don't let your prices, your problem do the talk. You do the talk. You prophesy. Amen? It says, make a decision and decree a thing. That's what prophecy is. And then it says, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. And that's what God wants you and I to do. Don't just feel sorry. Feel better. Poor me, I have cancer. Poor me, I have sickness. Forget it. Speak to it. Prophesy to it. I prophesy, I am not going to participate in this. And that's exactly what happened. God healed me, set me free. I did not participate in the side effect. I have my hair, praise Jesus, you know, and did not get sick. Why? Because I am prophesying, and God signed his favor in my situation. And God put you and I do, and I do the same thing. Amen? Awaken the prophetic. Who wants this? Raise your hand more quickly. And you can have this situation and praise God. Are you ready for the word tonight? Praise God. Have my husband come and share a word. I know he can't wait. He probably can't wait for me to quiet down and sit down. <laughs> so he can share the word. Anyway, give my husband a big hand. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I really, you know, I'm just honored to be here. Uh, and I'm honored to be able with all of you that came. Uh, how many of you heard about that? Heard about the conference through social media? Raise your hand. You heard about it. Oh, all the people raise your hand from social media. Praise Jesus. Give him a hand for coming. We're just thankful for all of you visiting. Um, I uh, just got back from Maui, actually, uh, a conference at that uh, I, I'm sure, and then Pastor Stephen and Lori were there, and um, it, it's, it's night and day, and then we jump into this one, and it's yeah. night and day. And um, when I was on Maui, um, I, uh, I think on Sunday, on Sunday uh, after church, after I preached, we went over to Lahaina where that city burned down. Um, I, of course, no man and I have a history. We, we she, she won't say this, but I, I can say this because I got the mic back on. And um, she, she's in denial about this, but, but she kissed me first, you know. <laughs> 
she kissed me at the at the, under, at the banking tree where we where we I met. Yeah. So, I'm not lying. I remember because it was a, it was a, I couldn't believe it. They didn't kiss me. But I think we need to go under the banking tree again. <laughs> Down. And of course, yeah. <laughs> you can take that a couple ways. But you know, I, 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 I wept because um, sense of injustice, yeah, I know. the loss of life, the devastation. Yeah. But I'm not standing behind the pulpit to talk to you about. Devastation. I'm here to talk to you about coming out of exile. Wow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. And why do we want to come out of exile? Is because that exile there was devastation. And that's why we call this conference. And over the last couple of days, I've been massaging this familiar story that I'm going to unpack in just a moment out of God's Word. But I, I told Pastor Steve today that, you know, there are 66 books in the Bible. I love all 66 of them. I have some personal favorites that I like specifically. Uh, but if I were, if all of a sudden someone told me, John, you don't have access to, you're only going to have access to one book in the Bible, what would it be? Would it be the book of John? Would it be the book of Acts? Would it be the book of Revelation? The book of Psalms? What would it be? For me personally, if I had one book, and I didn't have the other 65, it would be the book of Genesis. And I'll tell you why it would be the book of Genesis. Because the book of Genesis is the gospel story. It is. The entire 50 chapters is the story of God's redemptive purposes for the lives of men and women. Come on. Yeah. And, it, and, and you, you can pull out, you can extract so many truths out of, the, out of the book of Genesis for the rest of your life. And so, yet at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very aware of something that's very true. Everybody say the word hermeneutics. Everybody say hermeneutics. What that means is that that's a way of studying. Hermeneutics is that the Bible defines the Bible. Because right now, all over the world, there's a lot of believers in exile, Sister Linda, because they've got all kinds of doctrine, come on, all kinds of madness going through their head. Because of a of lack of understanding of hermeneutical truth, which means the Bible defines the Bible. Yeah. So when you read the New Testament, yeah. and the New Testament extracts something out of the Old Testament, takes an Old Testament narrative, Old Testament story, and then highlights it in the New Testament, that's something that I, and you and I, need to pay attention to. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's something that God highlighted. Because there's so many stories in the Old Testament. So why does the Holy Spirit have a New Testament author take that specific story? I need to pay attention and I need to ask that question. As a lover of truth and as a lover of the Lord. So with that, there's a verse of scripture that I want you to turn to. And we're just going to, we're, we're, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. I want to actually get to the text. I want you to turn to the New Testament, to the book of Jude. Jude chapter 1. This is the brother of Jesus. Chapter 1, verse 11. It's, it's in, I'm going to read out the New King James Version tonight. And here's what it says. Now, this doesn't sound very encouraged them. Encouraging, rather. Because it sounds a little bit condemning. Yeah. Right. And this is what I, what I really don't like, that that when people separate the testaments, yeah. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the changeless one. His character never changed. He was a lover in the Old Testament, and he was a lover in the New Testament. Come on. Yeah. But James, the brother of Jesus, is saying something, and he's not addressing 
He is not addressing in this that he's not addressing the world. He's addressing the church. Because, not because he's trying to be condemned, but he's trying to get the church to maturity. And I really probably could have just, we could have just left Catalina up here and I could have had a night off. You know, the way she was going. But, but I really appreciate what she said because in order for you and I to come out of exile, yeah. we have to leave yeah. something. Yeah. Wow. But listen to what the word says. Woe to them, for they have gone, the, gone in the way of Cain. They have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit and have and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Now, there are three specific characters that Jude highlights. Now, I don't have time to, to unpack all three of the stories, so I'm going to I'm going to do just one. Because first of all, the reason why is this. It's not because God's mad at us. It's not because God wants to punish us or kill us. That he knows that there are characteristics in Cain. There are characteristics in Balaam. And there are characteristics in the sons of Korah that we have. We have. Come on. We have. Because who in the house has not been at one time rebellious? Come on. If, if you haven't ever been rebellious, you probably were never a teenager. Come on. And and, 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 and and sometimes that rebellion can carry over into our adulthood. And who has at times in their lives been greedy? Been greedy. And uh, the other day I was I was talking to somebody on the on the Zoom call. I was, I was uh, we were doing mentorship on the Zoom, and um, we all know the story of Balaam's donkey. And I mentioned while I was sharing that here's what happens when we run after greed. Yes. The donkey becomes the prophet. <laughs> we stop being a prophet. Right. And start and we start being we start being we a salesman or sales that we run after greed and money. Right. Yeah. But the donkey had to stop the madness of the prophet because the prophet stopped being a prophet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want the donkey to become a prophet. I want to stay a prophet. Yeah. What I'm going to highlight tonight is the first one that Jude, that Jude highlights. Yeah. And this is what he says. He says, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Everybody say in the way of Cain. Turn your neighbor say in the way of Cain. Now the context of that story, and I'll get to it in a moment, is actually found in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. And I, I want to introduce something to you because I honestly believe that we like the citadel and the city of Tucson needs to come out of exile. Yes. Amen. Yes. But there is a way, because in that in that story, Pastor Steve, something is introduced. Yeah. It's not a story of condemnation. It's an invitation. Yeah. It, it, you got to understand that God's judgment is not condemnation. Right. God's judgment is an invitation to come out of that. Come on. Yeah. It's, a, it's a demonstration of his love. Yeah. And what is uh, ladies and gentlemen, in the text, first of all, is the word sacrifice. Everybody say sacrifice. Because I have found out in my own life that God loves sacrifice. Yes. It, there, 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 there's something that God gets really excited that when I'm given something that I want. Come on. That, that, because this is why we hear in the Citadel why we get up and talk about offering. Because many times we, we love money. We, we love money. I mean, who doesn't love money? You're a liar if you don't love money. Come on. Oh, I don't love money. Yes, you do love money. Because if someone gave you a million dollars, you'd take it. Come on. <laughs> right? You we all love money, but but the thing is, is the thing what what we, we have to understand is that God loves when you and I sacrifice something we love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh come on. Yeah. 
Are you hearing me? Yeah. They, 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 it's in his characteristics. He, he loves the fact that when we take our resources that we have labored for, or, or we have wanted to, to, to buy something for ourselves, and we give it to him, and we sacrifice to him. Oh, right. Come on. Right. Why do you think God was moved by the widow's mind? Now, he introduced us something called sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, I'm Miliana, I, I didn't get a chance to unpack because you've been so busy to tell you this thing that, that you think about this. Think about when the angel of the Lord mm -hmm. first told Mary that she was going to be impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Right. She's going to carry a son. Right. And then she tells the, the spirit that the angel tells you know what your son's going to do? He's going to be sacrificed. Yeah. Oh. Now, how many mothers do I have in the house? Oh how many mothers do I have in the house? Yeah. Now, most mothers I know we in the house are protectors. Right. You're going to protect your son. Yeah. So you get a prophetic word that, you know what? You're going to give birth. Come yeah. on. Then yeah. after he gets old, then he's going to die for all of humanity. Right. How do I know that most mothers could not pay that sacrifice? Right. Yeah. Right. And they would probably, and would, even though they got that prophetic word, even though they received that word, <clears throat> they would do whatever they could. Right. They would do whatever yeah. they could to keep Jesus from, from going through yeah. that kind of pain right. because they love their son. Right. But you've got to understand, Mary understood understood the power of sacrifice. Come on. Come on. Because, it, because it wasn't about the fact that she didn't love Jesus. She loved her son. It wasn't the fact that she, that, that she wanted her son to suffer. She did not want her son to suffer. Who would want of your son to suffer? But she understood the power of sacrifice. Oh, come on. Because if we're going to come out of exile, and we're going to come and become all that God would want us to be. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have to sacrifice. Yeah. We're going to have to sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Because let's, let's, let's look at this. Because think about this. This is the first time human beings, men and women, are now outside the garden. Turn to your neighbor and say, outside the garden. Okay. Well, it's interesting that sometimes I wish they could have stayed in the garden. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Yeah. Because when they were in the garden, things were pretty good. Come on, in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we that's why we believe in the power of God's blood. Yeah. That he, he that's why I love the Genesis story that he came to undo the sin in the garden. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Because what happens outside the garden isn't too yeah. good. And uh so outside the garden, outside the garden, Abel is going to give a sacrifice. And he gives a sacrifice, but then it says in chapter 4, verse 3, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Everybody say an offering, offering. to the Lord. And then, and then verse 4, it says, Abel also brought, brought of the firstborn of his flock and their fat, and the Lord respected, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Everybody say the Lord respected. The Lord respected. Now, here's the something that I, I understand. There's something that we gotta understand. I want God to respect my sacrifice. Whether you respect it or not, it's not my what, not what I'm trying to do. I want God to respect my sacrifice. Some of you in this room wait, work all day, wake up at 5.30 in the morning, and from 5.30 to 6.30, to cry out to God for the city and worship God. That's a sacrifice. Come on. Does yeah. every one of us like to sleep? Come on. Yeah. I know I like to sleep. Yeah. But we do the sacrifice. Why? Because we want God to respect our sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Because, it, I mean, I, I don't want to just sacrifice for other people because they can't reward me like God can. Oh, come on. I feel like preaching right now. They can't bless me like God can. But it's interesting, and I never had seen this in all these years, because I always equated this. 
And I just read it a little slower. But this is what it says. But he did not, verse 5, but he did not respect Cain. No, 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 no. Cain and his offer. See, if I was, I was under the assumption that he didn't respect Cain's offer, but the word counts, he didn't respect Cain. Wait a minute. I'm thinking in my mind. I'm thinking in my mind. This guy can't work with God. What are you doing? What are you doing? The first boy born on the planet. The first human life. The first boy that came out of the womb is not respected by God. What in the world is that about? As if he doesn't even have a chance. Wow. What are you trying to say? Because yeah. I always thought about the offering. Yeah. Because that's what I've been taught. Yeah. But when I saw that pastor thing, God began to speak to me. Wow. Is God being some kind of, is God saying, I'm, a, uh, I'm, I'm respecting one and not respecting the other? Is, yeah. is God showing favorites? Yeah. I thought he loved everybody. I thought that God, I thought that God, 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 what God respected everybody, and now He's not respecting Cain. Yeah. So that begins to ask me the question: Why didn't He respect Cain? Which means because Cain gave too. Cain gave an offering too. Which means that the potential is. I could have gave an offering tonight. And God may not respect my offering. So I have to ask myself this question. Is God respecting my sacrifice? Because again, if God doesn't respect my sacrifice, then I'm wasting my time. I might as well go to the club. Come on. And then I realized something. Why didn't he respect it? Is there something right. about the heart of God? Yes. The saying this. There's something that God is showing in his heart. Yeah. It wasn't that he doesn't want us to sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't want us, he doesn't just want us to give. And when I talk about sacrifice, I'm not talking about your money. I'm talking about your time. I'm talking about your treasure. I'm talking about everything you give. I'm talking about your life. Because anyway, he yeah. never asked Mary for money. He never asked the mother of Jesus for money. He asked him for, he asked him for kids. He sacrificed your son. Oh, come on. Can you give up what you brought into the world? Can you give up the prompt? Oh, come on. Can you give up something that matters to you a lot? Never ask her for money. Because sometimes, so for some, so some people I know, they can give money, but they can't give their time. I, I, I know, I know people. I know people that can write a check for a million dollars, but they, but they, they can't give their time of day to witness to somebody. Come on. No, that's true. So what happens? The problem with Cain was not that he didn't give an offer. The problem was the hard attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The attitude yeah, that's of the it. posture. See God help us. That. That now we have that. I'm giving what I want. Right. Yeah. When I want right. to. Yeah. When I want to. Yeah. yeah. And how I want to. Right. Yeah. I don't want to sacrifice what I want to. Right. Right. And the way how I want to. Yeah. I want to sacrifice. Yeah. I want to sacrifice God the way you want me to. Right. And sometimes the biggest sacrifice is in a thousand dollar check. No. The come biggest on. sacrifice is my attitude. attitude. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come yeah. on. It's my attitude. Yeah. It's the attitude of my heart. It's the posture of my heart. That God, you gave me life. You gave me purpose. You gave me hope. You brought me out of death. You healed my wife of cancer. Oh, come on. You blessed me. You, 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 you caused me to write books that I didn't even know how to spell. You have caused me to travel all over this world and preach this good news. Oh God, I don't want to just give you what I feel like. Come on. Because I want to see Tucson born again. I want to see Tucson experience revival. And the reason it's going to take 
the reason why we haven't had revival is maybe we've only given what we want to give out of it. Not what God wants right. us to give. Absolutely. Yeah, God help us. You know, it's that Cain, Mariana. Oh, oh God. And I'm sure I, I appreciate, you know, my wife, she so graciously respects me. She does. I, I appreciate that for her. And I appreciate the time when people respect us and our ministry. And yeah. I know I so respect Pastor Steve and yeah. Lord, Michael and my yeah. coming. Yeah. And I respect all of you. Really, who I want God, I who I want us to respect. Oh, exactly. Do I do I respect God? Do I respect His heart? Do I respect what He does? What do I respect? Because to respect God means that I'm concerned what He's concerned for, yes. and I respect you enough because that's important to you. Yes. That's important to you, God. Yes. It's important to you, and so. It's important to me. You know what God respects? Covenant and commitment. Yes, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So I'm just going to sacrifice what I feel like. If I have a bad day, I'm not coming. Right, right. And so you think about this. If he did not respect Cain and his offering, what does that say? That actually says that God rejected him. Right. Can I, can I can I just tell you that I did I, I do this I do this on purpose. How many of you have heard of the famous psychoanalysis from Vienna, Austria, named Sigmund Freud? Yeah. How many of you have ever heard of that guy? Well, I'm going to tell you he's a basket case. Yeah, he is. He's an unbeliever. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So I just got finished reading a little book that he wrote. He, 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 I mean, he, he has a whole book on Moses. He believes that Moses was murdered. He believes that Moses was an Egyptian. He believes all this crazy kind of thing. And he believes that re, uh, people of religion, of faith, are psycho. Yeah. I mean, he actually believes that. And, and yet, yet, people, all kinds of intellectuals, and all kinds of, even Christian psychologists, glean from his teaching. I said, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And, and, and you know, the, 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 the modern psychology says, well, you know what, you know, if, you're, if you get rejected, you're going to have all this trauma. And certainly there's a bit of truth in it, but that's not the whole truth. Because let me just tell you, if we're going to come out of exile, come on, if we're going to come out of exile, there's something we need to understand. We might be rejected in exile. We might be rejected in the wilderness. We might get rejected by our family. We may get rejected because of what we sacrifice. Oh, come on. But I'm here to tell you right now, I am not going to let the rejection to determine the rest of my life. And some of you in this room have experienced rejection just like I have at a whole nother level. But rejection doesn't define me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That I can use rejection to shape me to become better. In other words, if God's rejecting me, then I'm going to find out, God, why are you rejecting what, what am I doing in my heart level? What am I doing in my life that would cause you to feel like this? Because I want to make it right. Yeah. Oh, come on. Are you hearing me? Yeah. See, that's the mature process. Yeah. The mature believer would say, okay, yes, I'm rejected. Yes, I, I feel rejected by you. But what can I do to fix it? Yeah. Not taking on the posture of a victim. Because the world way. Because the world would. Oh, well, I mean, honestly, I can tell you some liberal theologians, liberal Bible teachers would read a text like this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's justified in doing what he's doing. He's justified in being angry. He's justified in her. Because you know what? You rejected him, God. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's no. true. Uh, yeah. See, there are people that I know that some of the most successful, amazing people on the planet people, some of the people that have rejected in their childhood, yeah. rejected in their past, yeah. rejected in their ministry, and ways. Yeah. Think about this. The most successful person that ever ever walked this earth was rejected by humanity. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Come on, you heard what I'm saying. Yeah. But that rejection, yeah. 
That rejection did not become his destiny. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't know, you know that Jesus really, if you think about it, was rejected by his father on the cross. Come on, right? He says, why have you forsaken me? But he did not let the rejection define who he was or limit his destiny. That rejection became something that he could pull bowl over, some a mountain that he could climb, and a, and a mountain that he got victory over. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Or am I too prideful right. to repent our rejection? Yeah. It's your fault. Yeah. It's your fault. You rejected me, honey. <laughs> when I tried to kiss you, I did that. Come on. You know, it's her fault. It's his fault. It's it's culture's yeah. fault. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's the police's fault. Yeah. It's the yeah. system's yeah. fault. It's, yeah. it's the fact that I'm. I'm white or I'm black or I'm in brown or I'm yellow or whatever color I am. And it's all their fault. Why? Because we haven't used rejection as an opportunity to grow. Wow. 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 But this is what happens. I want you to, I want to, I want to tell you something that I don't want you to forget. So God did not respect Cain and the offering. So, and because of the of the unwillingness uh -huh. to repent right. when he was rejected, right. to ask God to make it right, yes. Yes. what happened? Two things happened. Because this is what this story tells. This is why Jude said, "Do not go the way of Cain." Yeah. Yeah. Because the way of Cain. Please do not. Please, please don't forget what I'm going to tell you right now. The way of Cain. Is the way of bitterness and resentment. Right. That's, That's right. the way of Cain. Are you hearing me? So you rejected me. I got hurt at church. I got hurt in life. I got hurt in a relationship. I got hurt because of whatever. My dad, I'm not saying that that hurt is not real. Then now that gives me permission to be bitter and resentful at everybody I touch. I'm not going that way. Because here's the thing I know. Bitterness and resentment leads me down the path that I don't want to go on. Yes. And like Catalina said, I'll stay in exile. And the reason why people are still in exile is not because God doesn't want to deliver them out. It's because they chose to hang on, to anchor their life with bitterness and rejection instead of act, and resentment instead of anchoring their lives in truth. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I, uh, I understand something because I, 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 if I, all the people that I meet that go through things that I've seen, I, I can tell you something right now. I can honestly because I live with her. When she, you see, there's a choice that we can make. I mean, if you get a diagnosis like Noyana get a cancer, I'm using that example because I'm walking through this. Yeah. If you get that, you can choose based on our free will. You can choose to get better and present. Yeah. Wow. Don't answer yeah. God. I sacrifice. I know. I sacrifice. Yes. I I I preach the gospel. Yeah. yeah. I give like crazy. Yeah. I don't even have furniture in my house. But <laughs> I don't even have a TV set, and you give me cancer. Right. But what is that going to produce? The how is bitterness. Right. And resentment yeah. going to change Come that. On. In fact, what it will do, it will escalate. Yes. Yeah. Bitterness will escalate yes. if yes. it's not held in check. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to constantly, yeah. constantly in the context of life, I have to constantly put myself in check, yeah. making sure that I'm not bitter and resentful. Come on. Come on. Because Come on. I've been rejected by the church, right. I've been called a false prophet. I've been having people, I've been, you know, I, my intention has been well, I, I've tried to help people, and they pushed me aside. Come on, sir. I have to keep myself in check. Otherwise, if I allow bitterness and resentment to sink in, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to lose my witness, I'm going to lose my testimony, I'm going to lose my ability to influence. Yeah. What happens? I'm sorry, I just took too long. But this is what I love. It said that they did not respect Cain and his offering. 
And Cain was very angry at Adam, yeah. and his countenance fell. Yeah. So the the, the the writer, Moses, the narrator, in this narrator said, you can see resentment and anger on his face. Mm -hmm. This was amazing. If God really rejected Cain, then why did he talk to him? Uh, uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Because most people that you reject, you don't want to talk to. Them. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Yep. Why did he? Why did he? If he really rejected him, like we, like we interpret rejection or lack of respect, then you know what? I I see you in the store. I'm walking down the other aisle. I, I, you, I, I see a text from you, I'm not responding. I see an email from you, I'm not even talking yeah, to you. Yeah. I don't even want to call you back when you call. I, I, I reject you. Yeah, yeah. See, God, God, see, the thing about God is his mercy. He said, Cain, this is not, this is not about how I feel. But see, this rejection has to be used as fuel to make you better. Yeah. To make something right. I want, to get it, I want to make sure you get it right in life. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I love I love a verse. It's found in Romans chapter 5, verse 17. It's in, through, through one man. Ever say one man? Yeah. Death reign. Say death reign. Yeah. Through one man. Death reign. Say it. Through one man. Yeah. Death reign. Yeah. But through another man, we reign in life. Yeah. Ever say reign in life? See, when, when, uh, when you, because if you can't overcome the rejection, you'll never reign in life. And I came here to preach right now, and I'm going to stand up so I can see y'all, that, that, that God is raising up churches, and God is raising up you at this conference, that before the end of tomorrow, you're going to walk away with something with your head held high, your shoulders up, and say, I'm going to reign in life. Say, reign in life. And so when Jude talks about the way of Cain, we don't we see that Cain did not reign in life when he had right. reign. Right. He could have reigned in life. Yeah. 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 yeah if God, if you, God, so he's serious. He's he's being influenced by the dark emotions right. of bitterness and resentment. Right. Right. But listen to what God says. So the Lord said, "Okay." He gives him a prophetic word and asks him a question. Why are you angry? Why? Yeah. Why? Why? What do you have to be angry about? Look at the fact I'm talking to you, man. Why do you have to allow your emotions to control you? Why? Right. Why do you have to allow the emotion of rejection mm -hmm. to be what defines you to justify what you're getting ready to do? Mm -hmm. Right. Why has your countenance fallen? Why are you bitter? Why are you walking around upset all the time, looking down in life? Yeah. Don't you know? Don't you know something? Don't you see it? See, only love will point out your faults. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 This is why the world don't love you. Right. The world does not love you. No. Because they will not point out your faults, yeah. but real love point out. This is an area of your life. Yeah. You don't have to be that way. This is how you change yeah. it. Yeah. Come on, that's love. Because I want to make the best person you can be, the best version of yourself. I want you to be that type of person. In other words, because I know what this depression, I know what this bitterness, I know where it is going. So, then the Lord says, then the Lord, because again, the Lord is talking. And you know what? In the context, Pastor Steve, this is what I see. God never talks to Abel. No. Wow. He doesn't talk to Abel. He talks to Cain. I never thought about that. You know why? Because God loves people even though they're in a place that they shouldn't be. Right. Oh, come on. Amen. Because he didn't need to talk to Abel. He needed to talk to Cain. He was in the heart of the Father telling Cain, why are you feeling this way? I want, I want to show you how you can fix it. Right. This is what he said. I love verse 7. And this is an invitation. If you do well. Everybody say, if you do well. Will you not be accepted? End of rejection. Come on. The opposite of rejection is acceptance. Yeah. How many want to be 
accepted. Every one of us in the contest of relationship have been born. Our psyche, our psychology, our mental state, we thrive in a place where we are accepted. We don't thrive in a place of rejection. We don't reply, we don't uh, we don't thrive in a place of isolation. The problem with bitterness and resentment, it goes down and we put it produces isolation and we stay in the exile. But acceptance brings us out of exile. It brings us out of exile. I accept you. But there uh, but that invitation of acceptance it requires a sacrifice. Oh. It requires a sacrifice. In, in, in other words, you, if you do it, in other words, you already know what to do. We already know what to do. We already know in our conscience that bitterness and resentment is wrong. We already know that. If you do well, will you not be accepted? See, because here's the problem with modern psychology. We reward people who don't do well. That's a truth. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. We do. We reward people in the liberal theologians, psychologists, and the modern world rewards people who don't do well because we don't want you to be rejected. But what does that create? That creates even a darker world. Because listen, how many have seen the acceleration of darkness? Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Mm -hmm. Through the world. It's simply yeah. because modern psychology has replaced the prophetic voice right. in yeah. our society. Yeah. That's why God got to raise up a prophetic church yeah. and prophesize the word of the Lord. This is not acceptable. Right. We can't accept you when you do wrong. You're not accepted. Mm -hmm. we, we love you. But the thing is, we're not going to reward you no. for sinning. No. No. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're not going to reward you for doing something that's outside of God's will. Right. If you do well, do well, will you not be accepted? Yeah. Listen to this. And if you do, and this is the thing, hear this. And if you do not do well, listen, sin lies at the door. Here, man. Remember how many were here last night? How many were here last night? And Pastor Steve talked about the doorway. That the, the woman the woman went to the doorway. But there's there's because there's two things at the doorway. There's a prophetic promise at the door, and there's sin at the door. Come on. Come on. You have to receive, you have to receive the prophetic word at the door, but you also have to de destroy the sin at the door. Come on, if every one of us have sin at the door. Come on, are you hearing me? Every one of us, every one of us. And we have to resist the sin at the door just as much as we have to accept the word of the Lord at the door. Because we're at a doorway. Come on, we're at a doorway. He's at a doorway. I want to tell you something what's at the door. You know that. It's at the door every day. It's going to be at the door tomorrow. It's going to be at the next door. It's at my door in Vail. It's at your door in Tautusta. It's at the door. And, then, and, then, and, we're, and we're foolish if we don't think that sin is not at the door. It's at the door. Yeah. Yes. This one, I, 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 uh, well, the door is right there. Yeah. It's right there. I, I can turn on my phone. It's right there. It's at the door. Wow. Turn on my computer. It's right there. Yeah. Sin is at the door. Right. That's what he says. And this is the truth. Sin lies at the door. Yeah, it's lying there. It's yeah. right there, lying there. Right. Yeah. Waiting yeah. for you. Waiting yeah. 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 for yeah. yeah. At the entrance. At the entrance. Yeah. This is what. And let me see. This is why. God, for Father, God is the master psychologist, the master yeah. counselor. And this is what he tells him. And its, and its desire yeah. is for you. It's for you. Yeah. It, 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 it's just not at the door. Yeah. It desires you. Yeah. It desires you. Yeah. It desires you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know what that word desire actually means in Hebrew? It lusts at you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It desires you. It, it, it's consuming yeah. to grab you, to yeah. bite you, to poison you, to defile you, to right. destroy you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it grieves my heart. Mm -hmm. that, that we 
eagle. In our thinking before we make a decision, because here's the thing. Come on. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. My biggest mistakes in life is when I made decision when I was bitter. That's it. Wise and true. When I was angry and depressed, my camera was so Because I, I, I'm not here to tell you that there hasn't been the way of Cain in me. The way of Cain is in all of us. It's in all of us. That's why I've got to lay down the way of Cain at the altar. Come on. That's why I've got to get rid of the way of Cain in my own soul. Before I point the finger at somebody else, the way before we point at the homosexual, before we hold at the drug addict, the way of Cain is in all of us. And we have to, come on, that's what he said. It's at your door, and it desires for you. This is what, but this is, this is the goodness. This is what, so this is the, he, he shows the problem. He, he shows the problem, but God doesn't just expose the problem of Cain. He tells Cain, here's the solution. How many are ready for the solution? Yeah. How many are ready for the solution? Yeah. And nobody prophet. But you should rule over it. Yeah. Or one translation said, you should conquer it. Yeah. Come on. In other words, you know what? I don't care what's at your door. I don't care what. It, it may be your may be rejection. It may be lust. It may be addiction. It, it may be all the bitterness. It may be resentment. But whatever's at the door, I tell you, you can rule over it. Oh, come on. Because I'm never going to come out of exile if I never go through the doorway and realize who I am in God that I can rule over Because I'm going to tell you, everybody in this room struggles. We are human beings. We were born into sin. The ways of sin to death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And because of Christ and because of the power of the cross, I can rule over now, now, you may not realize this, but this particular utterance by the word of the Lord was before the cross. Come on. Yes, Lord. It was before the cross. Yeah. It was before the sacrifice of Jesus. Come on. And if we can rule over this before the sacrifice of Jesus, now that we've had the cross, how much more, come on, can we rule over it? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That means there's nothing that you and I can't conquer. Wow. Yeah. Right. We can't all conquer it. We set a heart. We yes. set a heart. I'm going to set my heart. Yeah. I can conquer. I can conquer cancer. Yes. yes. I can't conquer addiction. That's right. I can conquer divorce. Come on. I can conquer my mistakes. I can conquer rejection. I can conquer this. Yes. Amen. I can conquer yes. insecurity. I can conquer anything. Yes. Because he said I can move over. Turn it in so you can rule over it. You can rule over it. Yes, Lord. But see, because free will gives me a right to let the bitterness and resentment rule over me. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, it's just not a condemnation. No. It's an invitation. Yeah. For Cain to change his position. Right, right. Yeah. right. Change your position. Right. Yeah. Right, I do. I mean, I'm not really. I'm not, yeah, I didn't respect you. Yeah, I didn't respect you. But you know what? All this has happened just need to expose your heart. Right. Because how can I bless you? Yeah. The fullest how I'm going to bless you. Right. you got to go over this thing. Right. Yeah. Because this thing will come back to bite you. Oh, yeah. It will come back to destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Yeah. Okay, so he gives him this invitation. And so, gives him this prophecy you will go over. Mm -hmm. I, I have to tell you something. It won in one year. One of the challenges I had in ministry sometimes is people that hear the word of God. Yeah. They come in the house of God. They, they get prophesied over. They, they get an amazing prophecy about you can rule over, you can be blessed, you're going to be yeah. this, do that. But they sabotage themselves yeah. because of their own free will. Yeah, so Because we live in a world, let me just say it, we live in a world that has put our personal freedom yeah. over the standards of God. Yeah, well, true. Yeah. That's called, by the way, that's called idolatry. Yes. 
And so he can rule over it. Yeah. But what happens, he doesn't personally deal with the bitterness and the rejection. So what happens when bitterness and rejection and resentment is left unchecked? That's why, that's why we have conferences. Not so we can feel good and fall out. Well, come on. Not so we can just cry. Is you can do this. It, not so we can just feel good and get all pumped up or taken off. Her. Oh, come on. Let them take your money. That's not what, that, that's not, I don't want your angry money. Come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and we didn't just do that just to do this. Big waste of time because I can go home back to sleep. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, we're, 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 we're now senior citizens according to the world. I don't feel like a senior citizen, but we act like senior citizens. But as soon as we got to the house, I'm gone. I'm gone. We're taking them out. But, but, but I, I, I didn't, I, I, we didn't have this so that you'd walk in here one way and leave the same way you came in. We want to lay hands on everything that brings. We want to prophesy so that you can not only get a prophecy, but that you can rule over the stuff that's at your door. How many want to rule over the stuff that's at your door? How many want to remove the darkness around you? That's good, Father. Wow. My, my, my. But see, it's left unchecked because he gets himself in isolation. Right. Yeah. You know, because you never. You never, in this, during the, in the course of this particular dialogue, in the narrative, you never hear Cain saying, God, I need your help. I got this narrative, stay your life. I, I need you to help me to move over. You never hear that dialogue. You never, you never hear him say that. So this is what happens. Now, Cain talked, was able, his brother. And it came to pass. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against him, against Abel, his brother, and killed him. I'm the son of the mount guy, Matthew 5, 6, 7. God talks a lot about anger. Because if we don't deal with our bitterness and resentment, it escalates into anger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He does. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know the time frame. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know the time frame okay. between yeah. verse 7 and yeah. verse right. 8. Right. Yeah. But we do know that there was a choice yeah. that Cain could make. Yeah. Right. Okay. Am I going to rule over this or am I going to let this rule over me? Oh, my yeah. gosh. I don't want anything ruling over me other than the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Spirit of God. If John's spirit rules over him, not too good. It doesn't turn out good. If, if the, okay, let me just tell you, when I was in Lahaina, honestly, Pastor Lori, I was so angry. I was really angry. I was angry at the government. I was angry at the, the narrative that was painted. But see, if I allow that anger, because, it, because the thing is, we think just because of the injustice, we have the right to be bitter and resentful because of the injustice. Oh, oh, come on. Right. Uh, you, you, we have the right to be bitter and resentful, resentful right. because of the injustice. This is an injustice. Right. Right. I mean, you got this place. I mean, I'll give you an example. You got you got people that that own million dollar homes that are are, are living in a hotel, right. paying their mortgage right. while they're living in a hotel. And I can tell you because I because I was there. I mean, I I had a meeting with with people that were doing, were actually doing what they can. When the, the, the county won't even allow them to get a permit for water and sewage so they can rebuild. I mean, that's the bureaucracy. I mean, that's enough to make you really bitter and really angry toward, toward the government. Now, I'm not justifying what they do is right. I think it's actually, I think it's demonic in nature. I think it's wrong. But if I take the posture of bitterness and resentment, it escalates into murder. See, that's the problem. You take, you, know, you, take, you take what's happened in our world through racism and, death and terrorism and all the things that have been happening over the course of our world the last 10 years is because of bitterness and resentment left unchecked. Now, because of what you did, I have the right to kill you. It happens. It happens. It's true. Yeah. It really 
Yeah. Right? Because I'm justified. Yeah. yeah. I'm justified. Right. It happens in the church. Yeah. It happens in the church. Yeah. It happens in the house of God. Yeah. 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 I don't have to murder somebody to physically murder them. Yeah. 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 He says, kill them. But there's something that you need to understand. So, I mean, and here's what's kind of crazy about this narrative, and I, I know I've been talking a lot, but I'm going to talk about yeah, because I want you to get this. Yeah. If God's the God of love, I wouldn't believe God's love. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you to think, think about this, Robert. Think about this. If God's the God of love, why didn't He warn Abel? Abel, your brother, he's not coming to the field to barbecue. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's coming to barbecue you. Come on, he's coming to barbecue you. Yeah. I mean, we don't hear God having dialogue with Abel. Right. No, we, we hear God having dialogue with the murderer. We used to murder him. Oh my gosh. Wow. We don't hear God God having dialogue with the guy that just right here. He had a dialogue with the Lord. Yeah. I mean, what's up with that? I mean, God, where's your sense of justice there? Because let me ask you a question. Do I want justice? Do I want mercy? I want justice, but I want mercy. Why did you want? And there's something that something that I want to just because you know here's the deal we need more bitter and resentful. Let me say no. When we're bitter and resentful, we want to ruin everybody and everything that causes us pain. Yeah. Oh no, 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 I want to move it. Yeah. For instance, like you know, right now the homosexual community, LGBTQ, SRT, whatever they are, have together. They have a right to marry, adopt, they have, they have a right to equality. But see, out of bitterness and resentment, they want to kill everybody that doesn't believe like them. That's, but the church does the same thing. But if I don't agree with you, I want to be removed. Come on. You know, all of them, the Genesis story is the gospel. Really, it, it really is. I mean, so so the I, I, idea is that I'm going to remove anybody that causes me pain. Because here's the thing: why do we have? Why do we experience pain? Because it tells us something in us is not healthy. Come on, something's not healthy. But there's something in us that needs to get healed. Come on. Why did God come to him and say, hey, you can conquer it, you can master it, because there's something in you that you need to get healed, but you can, you can get healed. It was an invitation to heal. And so because he's resentful, he makes that decision and, re and then resentfulness, because I, I, I just I just was thinking in the fact that Melanie, that here, here is here, here is Abel, and Abel is like this innocent guy, you know, he, he's a, because it's like, why is Cain protected? Why do you protect the murderer? And, and and then and then you you protect the the, the guilt, you protect the guilty, but the un the innocent get unprotected. Oh come on! Yeah. Where's the justice? Why do you why are you allowing innocent babies to be killed? It just just makes sense. Right? Why don't you warn Abel not the brothers? But let me move on to this. I can run on that. So then the Lord said to Cain, verse 9, where is Abel, your brother? Everybody say, where is Abel? Where is Abel? Now, do you think that God didn't know where Abel was? <laughs> no, I, he knew exactly where Abel was. Yeah. Abel's blood had been shed. I want to tell you something. 
No one can can kill Babel because he couldn't kill God. Yeah. He couldn't kill God and try to kill what God loves. Uh, no. No. Oh, I can write on that. Uh, Where is your brother? Don't listen to me. That's what he said. He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Yeah. Church, you know why we pray from 5.30 to 6.30? Because we are our brother's keeper. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are our brother's keeper. Yeah. I want to be my sister's keeper and my brother's keeper. Because let me just tell you right now. And I'm going to start wrapping this up and land in this plane. And we're going to get in trouble tonight. And I'll preach like Peter. And he said, I'll preach till midnight. <laughs> because there's a lot in the story. There's a lot in the narrative. But here's something we have to understand why we are our brother's keeper. Yeah. And why we have to be our brother's keeper. Because we, we understand here in Tucson, he's, I'm just using it, we got a homeless problem. Yeah. We got a homeless problem. But there's, there, there's something worse than the homeless problem. Yeah. What kind of society produces homeless? Uh -huh. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So I want to tell you this. There's something worse that Cain did than murdering his brother. You know what it is? Yes. It's indifference towards the murder. Yeah. It's, it's okay. I don't care. Am I my brother's keeper? Church, there's something I don't want to sit here with me. I never want us to be indifferent to the needs of another human being. I never want us to be indifferent for somebody I don't agree with, somebody somebody that don't have, have my religion, my life, or my values. I don't want to show indifference to the sin. Oh, come on. I don't want to show indifference. I don't want to show indifference to anybody made in the image and likeness of God. Are you here? The only person I'm going to be indifferent to is the devil. Come on, are you hearing what? I'm not going to be indifferent to another person. And what? Because this is the biggest problem with the culture right now. It's not that you're, that it's not racist. It's indifference toward the other person that is not, oh, come on. That doesn't look like you or think like you. It's the indifference that you don't even treat them as human beings. Come on. You don't see the value of them. If you don't think about this story, here was a guy full of bitterness and resentment, and here God is talking to him. Saying, you know what? I value you, Cain. I value you, Cain. Uh, because the message of love is that we have a human obligation. We have an obligation to be the keeper of this city. Come on, we're not praying because we're not, because we just want to wake up and say we're praying. We're praying because we have an obligation to keep this city and be our brothers and sisters keeper. Can I hear an amen right now? Amen. And I can't neglect, I can't neglect the rights of another human being. Right. My responsibility right. is not to be indifferent towards you. Right. Amen. It's the message of the Good Samaritan. Amen. It's the message of the Good Samaritan. And he said, I don't know, am I my brother's Yes, you are your brother's keeper. You, you understand your brother's in the condition because you didn't keep him. The society, don't blame the government. Don't blame. Because the moment you blame, you get bitter and resentful. But you are. You are responsible. I'm not saying that every one of us are guilty, but we're all responsible. Listen to this. Then I said this. I'm going to wrap this up right now. Corey, if you could, Pastor Lori, if you could, if you could come to the, to the panel. What have you, what have you done? Because bitterness and resentment causes me to lose my sense of obligation to others. Right? And he said, what have you done? Mm. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So he says, so now you are cursed from the earth which has opened his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Verse 12. Listen to this. Now listen to this. When you kill the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. Uh, no, you're going to work and not produce it. Yeah. 
you know, you're going to give and not produce the fruit. What? You're going to sacrifice. Wow. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Because you chose bitterness and stuff over an invitation to conquer it. So you can work 24 7 and you're not going to get any fruit. <laughs> Come on. Then, a fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. So, in other words, I'm leaving you. My presence is leaving you. No longer is my presence going to be. My presence is leaving you. That doesn't sound too encouraging. That doesn't sound encouraging, but it is. Because, because of what it says in the New Testament, in a verse that I did read in Hebrews 11, chapter 4, we call the faith chapter. So, guess what? Cain is now banished. Cain is banished. Because it all boiled down to a refusal to sacrifice. That's where it initiated from the refusal to give God what he was asking. That's where it all boiled down. I was I was talking, we've been talking about this all weekend, Pastor Steve, about the fact that we know people who are called into ministry. They're, they're called by God. There's an anointing on their life. There's a grace on their life. But at the end of the day, they refuse to sacrifice their what they want instead of choosing what God wants. It's all one of that. And that trigger, that triggered the bitterness, the murder, and all that, the indifference and that, that's what they're, they're refusing to sacrifice. God loves sacrifice. Right, right, right. Yeah. But guess what? Yeah. So Cain is wiped off. He's wiped away. Yeah. But here's something why. Because it, I, I mentioned about uh, I mentioned about Abel and God not talking to Abel. But listen to what the commentary in Hebrews chapter eleven, verse four, as I wrap this up tonight. By faith. Everybody say by faith. Okay. Everybody say by faith. How many love faith? Okay. How many love faith? Okay. This is it. By faith. Because guess what? This tells us that, that Cain's offering was not made by faith. Ah. It was made by his flesh itself. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. How many want to give God an excellent sacrifice? Not just a sacrifice, but an excellent sacrifice. Then Cain. Though which he obtained witness that he was righteous. In other words, your sacrifice was a sign, witness to me, witness to humanity, witness to human history. You're a righteous man. He says, God testified of his gift. Everybody say, God testified. I love testifying, but I'd really like God to testify about what I gave. Come on. Oh, come on. How many want God to testify about you? That means that God was in heaven testifying. He, he, he may not be in earth talking to Abel, but God was in, in heaven testifying about Abel's sacrifice. I pray that we would become a people that maybe people aren't talking about what we gave and think we're foolish. And think we're ridiculous, Pastor Lori, about what we give and what we do here on earth. But God's in heaven right now testifying about Linda, testifying about Miguel, testifying about Robert, testifying about Pastor Steve, testifying about Francisco and Virginia. He's testifying about the gift. And when God testifies about the gift, let me just tell you, it may look like what I gave cost me my life. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Let me just tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Come on. what Abel gave cost him his life. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come Church, on. The, the thing is, I'm not, I must tell you, this is the way. I, this is where our God is. He wants to give that's going to cost us everything. That's, right. yeah. that's how he is. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, give me my life. Give me, give me your heart. Give me my life. Give me everything. Give me it all. Yeah. God testified. Of his gifts. Listen, this, listen, listen, listen. And though he is being dead, though he's being dead, I mean he's dead. Yeah. 
Yeah, he was killed. Yeah. Yeah. He's dead. He's killed. Yeah. His blood. He was killed by his blood. Right. right. For sacrifice. Yeah. Listen. Right. Still speaks. Hey. Yeah. He still speaks. Yeah. He still speaks. Yeah. So in other words, his sacrifice is still prophesying today. Come on. Church, yeah. so I want what you do, yeah. and I want what I do is still prophesy after I am dead. Oh, come on. Uh, which means that he, he's, he, he's still speaking. That the things I'm doing for God, the things I'm doing for the Lord is still speaking all after I'm gone. Come on. Are you hearing me? How many want your giving? I want my worship to still speak. My service to speak. And we don't hear nothing about Cain. Cain isn't speaking. Cain ain't prophesying. Cain is not prophesying. But Abel is still prophesying. That's why I, ladies and gentlemen, want to give God my entire life. Because I'm going to still be prophesying long after the Lord takes me home. Can I hear an amen right now? I want, I want my, my prayer life to still be speaking my sacrifice. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, you had two hours of sleep when you got up by 30. It's a sacrifice. Yes. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Uh -huh. Yes, Lord. You give your offering away in Maui. You have another conference coming up. Yeah. And you're giving more. Again, I want my sacrifice to still speak. Yes, oh God. I want to do. And not just speak on earth. Yes, Lord. God. I want God to hand out. I want God to hand out. Hand out. Hand out. Hand out. You share the faith with me. You share the faith with me. I want one more. I know you're running more on the phone. Saying, hold on. I want to tell you something. I got a guy. I got some people in Tucson, Arizona. I got a couple in Indonesia and Francisco. I've got, a, I've, got, I've got a family called the Acosta family. I've, I've, got, I've got a young lady, a young a, a young 20 year old that's a preaching machine. Her name is Teresa. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I've, got, I've got a couple named Monique and, and Michael who made this journey over it and they're prophesying. And, and, that, and that, but yeah, I want to let you know all of heaven, their sacrifice is speaking. Lift your hands all over the house. All over the house. Lift your hands all over the house right now. All over the house and begin to worship God. Give God a sacrifice. Give God a sacrifice. A sacrifice with our hands, our language, our body, our spirit. Give God the kind of sacrifice. Oh, what a, the people would say, oh, what a waste. What a waste, evil's life. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Maybe a waste in the eyes of the world. Maybe a waste in the eyes of even the church. Yes, so God. We do. Yes. We do. Because we live in a day and age where people want instant gratification. I want what I want right now. Yeah. Well, instant gratification demands no sacrifice. Right. But instant gratification produces bitterness and resentment. And so, then if you don't get your gratified the next time, well, you're all angry. But when you right there, the heaven is I'm not standing for him. This is touching me right now. Wow. And it's touching me past the day. So good. Jesus. So good. The Lord just spoke to me. The, the Lord just spoke to me just now. In his whisper, he said, John. Because of what you did in Jesus. It's still going to stay. Yeah, Jesus. That little guy Isaiah. That little guy Isaiah. The kids over there. The parents over there. They won't forget these days. When I'm all gone, the sacrifice will still be speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Put your hands to Jesus all over the house. Pastor Lord, just whatever the Lord has placed upon you. Just this worship. Let's give God a sacrifice of praise right now. If I could ask one of the brothers if he could move to the pulpit, I would greatly appreciate it.
for sure right now. If you could do that, if you could do that for us, thank you, for, thank you, Robert. Thank you so much. Let's just worship and go ahead, Pastor Lord. Church, Jesus. Raise your voice. 